it's very slow and pretty painful and I want to rewrite it with a Brett Firth search but that's for another time um, let's take a look at Advent of Code 2022 day 13 we're almost at the halfway point right we have 24 stars one more star and we're halfway there day 13 distress signal you climb the hill and again try contacting the elves however you instead receive a signal you weren't expecting a distress signal oh no your handheld device must still not be working properly the packets from the distress signal got decoded out of order you'll need to reorder the list of received packets your puzzle input to decode the message your list consists of pairs of packets pairs are separated by blank line you need to identify how many pairs of packets are in the right order for example blah 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 i guess this will be our test input cat greater than test input okay packet data consists of lists of lists and integers each list starts with an open bracket ends with a closed bracket and contains zero or more comma separated values either integers or other lists yeah i see that we got some nesting going on here this is where um languages other than rust are kind of handy you could just probably read this in directly as a as a string like python i think you could just do that when comparing two values the first value is called left and the second value is called right then if both values are integers the lower integer should come first if the left integer is lower than the right integer the inputs are in the right order if the left integer is higher than the right integer the inputs are not in the right order otherwise the inputs are the same integer continue checking the next part of the input oh dear if both values are lists compare the first value of each list and the second value and so on if the left list runs out of items first the inputs are in the right order if the right list runs out of items first the inputs are not in the right order lists are the same length and no comparison makes a decision about the order continue checking the next part if exactly one value is an integer convert the integer to a list which contains that integer as its only value then retry the comparison for example if comparing 000 and 2 convert the right value to oh to 2 i get it a list containing 2 the result is then found instead by comparing this and this okay Using these rules, you can determine which of the pairs in the example are in the right order. This is in the right order because the three is less than five. They're in the right order because the two, the two here is less than the four here because we converted the four to a list. I see, because the one and the one compared, then the two and the four list compare. And because the two is smaller than the four, then it's okay. Ugh. Okay, nine versus eight, seven, six. So we have to convert the nine and then it's nine versus eight. So they're not in the right order. Okay. I think I understand what's going on. I think I understand it. What are the indices of pairs that are already in the right order? What are the indices of the pairs? How do you find out what the indice of the pair is? Index. The first pair has index one, the second. Oh, 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 I see, I see. So this is pair one, so it's index one. So we need to know what are the indices of the pairs that are already in the right order determine which pairs of the packets are already in the right order what is the sum of the indices of those pairs okay get your puzzle input let's get our puzzle input get input uh 2022 day 13 what does it look like it looks like a bunch of bunch of numbers are they all single digit can we cheat on the number parsing let's take a look oh no my eyes just got drawn to this 10 okay so there's at least two digits Maybe 10 is the highest. Doesn't matter. Two digits is two digits. All right. So, yeah, Hukumur, Hukumur says there are 10. Yeah. Okay. We'll deal. We'll deal. Um, the first thing first, we'll set up the uh, file. All right. Got day 13, got day 13 here. Oops, I put a space. Save it, try to build it, create the file, jump to the file, fill in the file, 13, try to build it. Oh, and we don't have um, bacon running here. Let's get bacon going. Oops, I missed something. Oh, I missed, missed the day 13. There we go. Okay, 
So this is our file. We got two unsolved. So here's here's what I'm thinking. We, we Rust won't let you do this, right? It doesn't like mixed information in a list. You can't say, let's go to the parse function. You can't say foo, let foo equals and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can't do that. Rust is going to complain saying, you know, I was I seeing numbers all along here and now suddenly you're throwing a slice at me. That's not allowed. Uh, Hakumar Matata says, I can't wrap my head around how to transform the input into data structures recursively. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and in fact, that's exactly what I was thinking of doing, was doing it recursively. Um, so in order to solve this issue here, we have to make them all the same type. And the way to make them all the same type is to invent our own type. So I'm going to derive debug, because I'm going to want to print these guys out. And it's basically an enum of a value that takes either a number, and I don't know what these numbers should be. If 10 is the biggest, we could make a mu8. Um, I'll just uh, i32 just cause, or a list, and the list will just be a vec of vals. So this is our type. So it can either, either be a number in here, or it could be a, a list. And that just contains a vec Oh, a vec of vec? No, a vec of val. Oops, val. Typo that. All right. Oh, this still won't work. But now we should be able to say vec bang or val list um, vec bang. And it can be val num1, val num2, val list. Right, vec bang, val, num, three. And you have to get the, all the brackets and braces in the right order, and then I should be able to debug this out. Foo. Right, and then that way we can create this thing. Oops, yeah, so we, we got, um, this is a list here. Num, three. So all we need to do is generate code that can generate that, right? Num, num, list num. So let's write a parser. How hard could that be? <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have said that. So we have, we're gonna impl val. Um, I think the easiest way to do this would be to, I'm gonna say let bar equals val parse and this is just one two three and that way we'll see if this this works right because then this is what this should be derived from so we can just print them both out and see if they look the same and that won't test any of my edge cases but who cares <laughs> we'll get there um Let's do parse, take, take in a string, and return to val, and let's just say self, let mut c equals s.chars, and then just return self parse into mut c. And that way we can iterate over the characters one at a time, because there's no backtracing, there's no keyword lookup, there's no nothing, it's just basically the same. Akumar says, I came up with the same enum. Oh, good. So I think we're on the right track. Let's say parse into, and now that's going to take um, chars. Um, I think this might be like in standard something chars. So let's find out. Let's say val num zero and just see if this builds and find out what I'm missing. Yeah, standard string chars, okay. And that builds, okay, good. All right, we're on the right path. Now we need to see um, what kind of character we're dealing with. We have, we're, we're gonna need to build up a val, and that val is going to be a list, right? So we need a vec, let mut result equals vec new. 
and then we'll need to go while let sum ch is equal c next. If it's an open bracket, then we're going to recurse, right? We're going to say, oh, we're starting a new list. So that means we're going to say uh, result push self parse into C. Um, but that means that we've already stripped off the open bracket, right? So that means we need to, before we even do this, we need to strip off the open bracket too, because we want to have parse into have the same kind of entry point. So we got to say if C next unwrap is not equal to a open bracket. That way at least we strip it off and say panic. This should never happen. Bad input. But that's fine. And now C is the iterator C is at the one right after the bracket, just like in this case. So now they're equal. So that's that's important. Oops, no comma there. I want to put a comma here. If it's a comma, that's the other thing it can be, right? Let's just pull these up here again. So open bracket, it could be a comma. I'll deal with numbers in a minute. That means we're done with whatever number we're on. Let my num equal zero. So we'll push the number result push self. Nope. Yep. Self num of num. Oh, and then we have to reset it. So we do this and then num equals zero. Um, it didn't like that because I forgot this part here. Okay. So then we have zero through nine to deal with. And 0 through 9 is basically num is equal to num times 10 plus um, ch minus 0. Uh, ch as u8. And what am I using? I'm using i32s as i32. Can I do that without all of that mess? The comma there. And then anything else is panic, bad, char, ch. I think that's that's the whole shebang. Let's see if that built. Of course it doesn't. Oh, because I forgot the word match. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, I got a little ahead of myself here. Um, that was dumb. Match ch. Okay. All right. And now it's computing and it we got a bad character space. Oh, okay. Really? Did I put a space in there? I did put a space and there are no spaces in here. So let's, um, let's get rid of the spaces and see what we get. Oh, right. Duh. We have to handle the, the closing brace. Let's handle the closing brace right here. Or cl closing bracket, sorry. If we have a closing bracket, then we just need to uh, return val list result. And we have to do that here as well, right? After we're done with the while loop, we have some sort of result. So val, it's um, val list result. And it looks like I put a lowercase l here. All right, so let's see if that's close. Um, not quite. It looks like I forgot that we're in the middle of a number. Oh, how do we know if we're in the middle of a number? Uh, that can get annoying. Um, are there any negative numbers in here? Oh, good. Okay. So that's going to be our clue. If number is negative one, then there is no number to, to add. If there is if it's not negative one, then we have to push that number. Um, and that's on the close bracket here. So if num is greater than or equal to zero, result push val num, num. And do that and do that. Oh, we have to do that here too. If num is greater than or equal to zero, that would have been bad.
to get the wrong number there. Okay. Um, now we're not getting any numbers. Oh, because we're not, we don't have these things here. Okay. Um, we have to handle it here. If num is equal to negative one, uh, else this. Uh, Kot three monk says I solved both parts. It was a bit of a struggle. Okay. Um, we'll see, we'll see how far I get with this. I have a hard stop in at eight 30. So we'll see how it goes. Shonya says, hi, Uncle Scientist. Can I see your runner trait? My runner trait. Oh, oh, yeah. It's all up on, let me, let me pull it up here. If you look here on my um, advent of code, you know, let me grab a link to that. You can take a look at everything I've got. All right, I'll just throw that in chat. Um, my runner trait along with everything else is in there. Um, right. So if num is negative one, then we want to start a brand new number. So we'll say num equals um, ch as u8 minus b of zero as i32. Semicolon. Okay. And now we have an extra zero here because why? Oh, because I set this here to, ne to zero, negative one. There we go. There. Okay, so now I think we're parsing things. Um, we can try it with the test input. Let's try it with the test input. Um, let lines equals AOC lib read lines test input dot text. Um, and that's actually going to, if we go back here, that's going to uh, strip out all the blank lines. So I don't have to worry about that. And I can just say uh, let lines, oh, we don't have to worry about the pairs yet. We just want to see if we can parse them. So print for L in lines, uh, print lin, debug out, um, val parse L. Let's see how that looks. That looks terrible. Found stir, found, okay. All right, so we have a 11311, that looks right. 11511, that looks right. We have a, a list of one followed by a list of two, three, four. List of one followed by four. We got the nine. Eight, seven, six. I think we got it, right? Four, we got two fours and then two plain fours and we got two fours and then three plain fours. I think the parsing is working. This is the most complicated one here. One, then a list of two, then a list with three, then a list of four, then a list of five, six, seven. Then we close a bunch of lists and then we get numbers eight and nine. Yeah, I, th I think we have it. So that wasn't too, too bad because, you know, it's all done recursively, right? We got this parse into here, which handles all the sub lists for us. And then we just push, either push the uh, number that we get. Oh, I should change, be consistent here. All these vowels should be self. Um, any others? Maybe this can be self too. That should be self, that should be self. Yeah, all right. And it only took one, one microsecond or one millisecond, sorry. Um, let's see if we can do it with the real input. Put 2022, 13.txt. Um, I do it the other way around, don't I? No, that's right. Um, input 2022, 13 text. Okay. And it exited safely, I think. It's hard to tell with bacon. Cargo run tail. Yeah, it didn't panic. So that's good. Um, oh. 
Nope, that's not the home key. What's the home key? There's the home key. Okay, so we don't need to print these out anymore, but we do need to compare pairs. So now we have to write a comparison uh, for this. So how do we do that? What we're trying to do is compare each side. So basically we'll take in two arguments, two vec lists, or val lists, and then start comparing. We'll compare one to one, one to one, three to five. And then we have to do this recursively also, right? If both values are integers, then when we have an answer, the lower integer should come first. If left integer is lower than right, the inputs are in the right order. If left integer are higher, the inputs are not in the right order. Otherwise, the inputs are the same. So we need basically to re be able to return left, right, or the same. We have to loop over um, a self and an other and return whether or not they're in order or out of order. And actually, actually, Rust has um, part of the standard library, something called ordering. So we can return, just for now, we can just return ordering equal, just to, just to show how that works. Um, I need, do need to import it. Right, and then, oh, I don't want to dump these out anymore. What we can do is just write uh, a recursive function that will allow us to compare um, the, the self with the other. So this is probably where the meat of it is, right? Um, and this is just a val, and this is a val. So we have to see, are they two numbers? Are they two lists? Or if, one, if, if, you have, if we have a one and a one? Um, hmm. So we can say match self and other. And then we can say if, if it's a val list left, val list right, then we can compare them. If we have instead a val num left and a val list on the right, Oh, you know what we have to do? We, ah, that's right. We actually have to walk through this. We have to walk through the lists. So we have to say let mut idx equal zero, and now we're going to walk our way through the list. Um, what happens if the list one list runs out? If both values of the list compare the first value, then the second, and so on. If the list runs out of items, if the left list runs out of items first, the inputs are in the right order. Okay. So let's let's check that first. If left len um, is less than or equal to index or right len is less than or equal to index then one of the lists ran out so we can say if left len the left len ran out first then we can return ordering less Right, because ordering is going is less equal or greater. So if we return less, that means the left is less than the right, which is what we want. Um, else, if left len is equal to right len, then we actually want to continue onto the next. Oh no, we're done. Right, if these are if these are equal, then they're then we're going to return equal. Because we want to keep going, I'm thinking about how you know recursing down into this. Otherwise, return ordering um, greater. If not, Hobo Tutor, 
says you don't need recursive to tokenize arrays, just pointers that go through both lines equally. Then you have cases left to grade and write. Um, well, I mean, I'm enjoying this way so far. Uh, I'm not sure the, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, I don't want to deal with going through pointers in Rust. I don't know. What, what language did you use, Hobo Tutor? Um, but basically, now we've handled the lists case if they're they're not equal. So we're assuming that they, we haven't run out of items. So we can say match um, uh, left of IDX and right of IDX. And these should be, these are the cases we need to deal with. If they're, if they're both integers, val num left and val num right, then we want to return um, if left if left is less than right then return ordering less else if left is greater than right return order ordering greater and i'm going to let rust uh, format this for me okay um, if we have a list on the left and a number on the right, then we want to convert the number into a list and then recursively compare. So we'll say um, let check is equal to, now this list is, is a vec. We actually want this thing here, left of idx. Left idx dot compare. Uh, val list vec bang right the reason I'm converting it to a list is because I'm, uh, I'm expecting a list up here so and then val num right and then I can say here if check is not equal to ordering equal so we've done the compare and if they're not equal that means one of them is less than or greater than, we can just say return check. And then we do the same exact code two more times, except we reverse this. This is num, and this is list. And so now we're gonna say um, val list um, can we do this? Yes, we can. Vec bang val num left dot compare to right. And then if they're not equal, then we, we found, we found the first place that they're not equal. And the last one is it'll compare a list to a list. And that's easy enough. We could just compare it to right IDX. So this is a little verbose. It probably can be cleaned up a whole bunch, but I think this matches the rules here. If one value is an integer, then we convert it to a list and compare it. If they're both integers, then we compare them directly. And if they're both lists, then we recurse into the lists and, and walk the lists. A hobo tutor says, I know I didn't do it. I just opened the problems when I see streamers do it. But you're comparing strings and just going from the start of the strings to the end is fine. No need to pop parts of the string out into new function calls. Yeah, I guess I'm not sure what you mean because if we're comparing like these two here, for example, Right, we're comparing nine with a list. So I don't know how a pointer can help here. Uh, if we're just walking along the strings, then we're not, I don't know. Maybe maybe there is a much better way, you know. I'm sure this, the speed runners do it really, really fast, but um, this is the way I'm doing it. And so far I'm enjoying it. Okay, so if this fails to match, if these, 
fall through, then we want to increment the index. So we say idx plus equals one. And then we loop back here. Oh, this needs to be in a loop. Um, and then if the loop fails, if we get through everything, then Um, then they're equal? Do we just return equal? Let's get rid of that comma. And then just we can say ordering equal. Let's see if this even builds. Hobo Tutor says you're a competitive coder. Oh, okay, good. Um, yeah, so I'm sure you you, you know exactly um, how to make how to write this very very fast um, I am having a problem though because I wrote so much code and I hate doing that and then ending up um, all these orders need to change to ordering um, that matches that that matches that there's the index and there's the increment and that should be on the loop Oh, I think I need also here, right? Yeah, I'm missing something. Or maybe like that. And then it, this has to be covering a, the case of bad input. And we still have this unclosed. This, oh, so this is still in the match. Yeah, we need this out of the match, and we need this here, and we need that there. That's still still not good. Um, here, on line 107, it thinks line 107 is wrong, and it's probably correct. Um, oh, no, it says expected val. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just need to give it a, a reference. So that needs to be a reference, and this needs to be a reference. But I still have a problem with one thirteen. Expected enum val found struct vec. Oh, right. Val is oh. So this has to be right. IDX. But we're still not there. Um, have we figured out where the... Oh, yeah. So this is this is unreachable here. Right, because we, we handle the case of running out of index stuff up here instead of down there. That's fine. But we still have a mismatched delimiter, and it won't tell me which line it's on. Yeah, and this is lining up wrong. I mean, that's it. Nope. Oh, dang it. Hopefully that doesn't blow everything up. Okay, so now this needs to be starred. And this needs to be starred. Okay, and then we got 11 warnings. Um, oh, we're, we're not using a whole bunch of things. Okay, let's fix those. We're not using the list here, or here, or here. Oxfolt, thank you for the follow. Um, Hopefully that showed up. I've, I've been having problems with my follow alerts not showing up. Um, value assigned to IDX is never used, but I'm using it right here. Uh, does it not? Um, okay. 
maybe maybe we just par start parsing and start comparing um let's create a lines uh chunks too i think i can do that yes okay so i let's let's try using because right now it's compiling we have a bunch of warnings but let's let's figure out the warning so we say let left equals um val parse pairs let's just say pair of zero of zero let right is equal to val parse 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 pair one um and then we can just say oh, what are we even trying to figure out oh right right we're trying to figure out the index of okay so index comma pair in lines chunks to enumerate if left dot compare to compare to right is equal to ordering less then we can say index plus no, no sum what am i doing i shouldn't be doing this in the parse function right or i should be creating the pairs here Um, vec of uh, vec say pairs is vec of left right oops um, val val left right okay so then we'll just parse these out and then we'll just say here left right and we say self pair push left right we don't care and then here let sum equal zero for p in self pair this time i'm going to call them pairs like that if p dot zero dot compare p dot one equals ordering less sum plus equals um the index right and then we just output that uh, test input dot text like that and then here we just output some and this should be 13 let's see if let's see what blows up oh sorry uh, I missed a whole bunch of things and the problem of writing so much code is a common problem for smart people <laughs> okay uh, so the more I write, the smarter I am, I hope. Um, and Hobo Tutor says, can I ask why Vim? I only like to fight with one arm tied behind your back too. Oh, okay, look. If, you, if you're going to come in and, and slag in my Vim usage, I happen to prefer it. Local variable. Um, right, so we actually have to do... What am I doing here? Um index we don't need we don't need it here now anymore right because we're just pushing it um and we do need it here ch -ch 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 pair and this is pair and this is pair and this is probably index It's a real question. Why Vim? Because I've been using Vim for the last uh, 20 years and I'm pretty comfortable with it and I like the workflow that I have with it. And I don't like using the mouse to move around. I like being able to say, you know, 10J and go up 10 lines and 10K and go down 10 lines and not take my hands off the keyboard. Um, oh, uh, iter enumerate. So I, it's just a matter of comfortable. I've tried VS Code um, it's fine, but I, I'm happy with this. Um, computing. Uh-oh. Do we have an infinite loop somewhere? I hope not. Yeah, see, I, this, so there's a bug here, right? That's where the bug is. Let me quit out of this. Um, before it burns up my thing. Oh, 
Oh, this is why. Um, this needs to be set before the loop starts. That's why. And um, this is the match. That's that. This is the loop. And now we're missing a, a brace here. Okay. There we go. Okay, let's try again. Nine. Why is it only nine? It should be 13. Right? That's what I read here. It was 13. Okay. Uh, why is it nine? Oh, it's nine because I'm off by one. Okay. Oh, and then we have unnecessary braces, apparently. Okay, it says 13. Good. All right, so are we ready for the uh, real input? The real input gives us 51.98. And that is correct. Huzzah! Humble Tutor says, one good thing with IDEs is that they keep you free of possible memory leaks. Um, I'm, I don't follow that argument. But, okay. Um, I don't know. All right, so I'm, I'm going back to the test input for part two. Let's see what part two is. Now you just need to put all the packets in the right order. Disregard the blank lines in your list of received packets. The distress signal protocol also requires that you include two additional divider packets. Using the same rules as before, organize all packets, the ones in your list of received packets, as well as the two divider packets, into correct order. Oh. Well, I mean, okay. That's, that should be super easy. Afterward, locate the divider packets to find the decoder key for this distress signal. You need to determine the indices of the two divider packets and multiply them together. The first packet is at index 1, the second packet is index 2, and so on. Okay, I'm not going to make the same off by one error. In this example, the divider packets are 10th and 14th, so the decoder key is 140. Organize all the packets in the correct order. What is the decoder key for the distress signal? All right. Um, this should be very straightforward because we basically wrote all the code we need to write. We just need to change the way we do the implementation here. Um, we just need to change this to be compare and we need to close this brace here. And then we say impl ord for val. And then we change this to say if pair dot zero is less than pair dot one. Um, and then we have to derive. Oh, we want to impl partial ord, ord for val, and then return. All these returns have to change to sum. Why don't I leave this alone? <laughs> I'm gonna leave this alone just for the moment. And I'm gonna say impl partial ord for val partial comp uh, self other and self. So it's exactly the same thing, but it takes an option ordering. And we're just gonna say sum self compare other. And with partial ord implemented, let's see if we can do it this way here, uh, less than pair one. And I think we might have to derive equal and ord. Yeah, no implementation for val equals val. So let's do that. So we can just say eq partial eq. 
right? And we might, no, that, that does the trick there. It still says 13 for that input. And should still say 51 something, 5198 for that. Okay, so we've successfully done that. For part two, all we need to do is say let mut um, list is equal to vec new for p and self pairs list dot push p dot zero dot clone right oh now it's unknown unknown probably because I didn't finish this yet list dot push p dot one dot clone um, list dot sort and then we have to find the two special ones. But this should work. Yeah, val val. Um, we have to insert the two special ones. List.push val parse two and six. Um, actually, well, let's do this. Let uh, what is what are these called divider packets divider packets d2 equals this let d6 equals this um this dot push d2 clone let's push d6 clone then we sort them and then we're gonna answer let answer equals one let mud answer equals one four l index comma val in list if val is equal to d2 or val is equal to d6 answer is multiplied by uh, index plus one I'm not going to forget the plus one this time there we go and that failed we can't clone them yet we can't sort them because we don't have ord but we have partial ord and if you have partial ord you can derive ord and then this doesn't work uh, list e iter enumerate no implementation for val val Now things are moved due to the implicit call to enter iter. And now we have an answer of 140. Uh, well, we have that answer. Um, should we try it just to see? And before we go back to the test input? Oh, there we go, there's a right answer. Perfect. All right, so this line does all the work. There we go. AOC day 13 done. Easy clap. Yeah. Um, how long did that take? Yeah, less than an hour. Not too bad. This actually, I, I enjoyed doing this a lot because I was able to make a little, um, it's, it just fell out. The whole ordering thing. I got, I got lucky that I decided to do it that way for part, uh, part two was just this little bit of code just to extend the, Thing to be partial ord which allows us to call sort without without the partial ord you can't call sort that's why i did it so if i comment this out right it won't build because um, there's no partial ord well for ord it needs it but if i take that out then it'll complain you can't compare because um, you can't compare this way and you can't compare that way. You need ORD and you need partial ORD. So that's why I did all of that mess. Let's see, uh, let's see how I did. Um, not the leaderboard. Yes, leaderboards, personal side. Ooh, didn't quite crack, crack uh, 15K. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, so I started just after seven, I guess. So it took me about 50 minutes. 
that was that was pretty good that was a lot of fun i enjoyed this this was the most fun one so far for me um the parsing was a lot of fun figuring that out getting the lists working and then the comparator here getting this all to work and now it's just you can just compare pairs right like that just using uh regular old expressions and you can sort them all right um i didn't actually check in part one and i didn't pay attention i should have noted that we were 25 stars um halfway there before i did part two but i was too anxious um but i think i'm out of time at this point Ooh, let's do this let's check in with clippy to see if clippy has any suggestions and then i'm going to call it a stream Ooh. Ord, you're deriving ord, but have implemented partial ord explicitly. So, oops, uh, git status, git add source, git commit dash m20. Oh, I, I won't be able to commit these changes because I have clippy errors. Dang it. All right, let's fix them. And hopefully I won't break anything along the way. That's interesting that Clippy cares more about um, there we go. So it wants me to actually implement ORD. Uh, if then compare self other. I mean, you should be able to just do that. It works, obviously. Um, self partial compare other unwrap. I mean, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to do this, right? Oops, did I, did I break it? Yes, I did. All right, what else is Clippy complaining about? If chain can be written with a match. Sort of. Actually, you know what we could do? We, we could rewrite it completely. Um, we can just pull the whole thing out. Now that I look at it, um, we can just say if these... Instead of this loop, we say while idx is less than left len and idx is less than right len, then do this stuff. Otherwise, right? Pull that out. Put that here. And actually, we don't have to put that here. We say left len compare to right len. That's, and then we just return that. Uh, there. And there's another if change to complain about. Um, if L is not equal to R, return L compare to R. Fine, you're going to be like that. There we go. And it should still give us the same values, hopefully. 5198 and 22344. Four. I like that number, 22344. Four. Epic Blog says, I have any overarching theme for this year's AOC? Um, not yet, I guess. I mean, it's been a very varied mix of puzzles. There hasn't been like, it's not like the encode year where a lot of, there were a lot of encode problems or the um, Dijkstra year where there's a lot of Dijkstra search problems. Um, this has been pretty varied. Um, and I, I like this one in particular because it gets to um, really exercise um, Rust's ability to create types and, and use traits and stuff. Um, I could have done this better. Instead of pushing these as left rights, I could have just made an array and then just part one would have been the pairs of values. Um, I have a little bit of time. Let me, let me commit these changes. Git add source, git commit. HM 2022 day 
13 parts 1 and 2. Let me see if I can clean it up just a little bit before I call it a stream. Uh, let's just make this a VEC of VAL and then part one can, can pair them up. Instead of pairing them up here, we'll just say for line in this. And instead of pairs, we can just put them, what are these called anyway? Arrays, lists, what are they? What's in terminology here? Packets, packets. So we just say self packets push. And then here we can just say iter chunks. Oh, we can't do that, right? Can we say chunks too? Yep. Okay. And then here, instead of doing it this way, we can just say list is equal to um, let's put these at the top. We start off our list with uh, vec bang of d2.clone, comma d6.clone. Right? That's a little cleaner. And then we can just say list.extend self pairs packets iter. Can I do that or do I have to do a copied? And I broke everything. Oh, right. Um, val parse line. Oh, I forgot the semi and the ampersand. Yeah, so this doesn't work now. Oh, pair of zero and pair of one. Yeah, and now we can't do the extend. Expected enum vowels found ampersand vowel. Okay. That might be a little cleaner. Um, we might be able to do it cleaner -er. Can we do this? Um, whoops. Let answer equals list iter enumerate uh, filter uh, packet where packet is equal to d2 or packet equals d6. And then fold one a b oh it won't let me do that oh i forgot that this thing here i deref it this way yeah okay and then we fold a b and now we have a u size val a32, so this is just A times equals B dot zero. Is that it? Let's see. Is it still 22344? Four? Nope. It is expected U size founded bracket. Oh, A times B, right. Uh, does not implement the copy trait. I didn't want to, hmm. Can I do this? Okay. No, wow, I got the wrong, wrong answer now. Oh, because it's, uh, yeah, I've got, I'm off by one. Two, two, three, four, four. Okay, so then we don't even need the answer business. Create 
output. Yeah, okay, that's a little bit cleaner. What do you think? I like it. I'm going to go with it. Epic Blogs is off by one in the year 2023. <laughs> okay. All right. That is going to be my stream for today. Thank you for hanging out with me. Oops, I forgot to save my last edit here, apparently. Uh, let's check in with Clippy, make sure I didn't break anything. Get diff. Yeah, so I just changed the pairs. Instead of having pairs of things, I just a list of packets and then part one um, chunks it up there instead of chunking it up in the parsing. We chunk it up in part one because part two doesn't need chunks. And then part two can just iterates over everything. Filters out what we don't need. And then just and multiplies in the uh, the answer. So we're, I think we're good. Git add source git commit dash m. 20, 22, day 13, clean up. Get push. And let's take a look. Should be right here. Perfect. All right. Thank you, everyone. Hakuma, Matata, Hobo Tutor, Kathri Monk, Epic Blarg. Very much appreciated, Sean, as well. Thank you, thank you. Um, I had a great time, and I hope you did too. And I will see you hopefully tomorrow for day 14 of Advent of Code.